to do my 31 week update. I'm 31 weeks and one day pregnant and a lot has happened this week. I feel like the past few weeks has been nothing really and this week I actually wrote some stuff down because I have had a lot of symptoms and yeah, we'll just get right into it because I feel like I have a lot to talk about. So the main thing is my weight gain. I've gained 24 pounds, I think, since my pre-pregnancy weight, which is up two and a half pounds from last week, which is kind of a lot. I think I am starting to retain a little bit of water because my rings are starting to get a little tight. And I read in my blog that at 31 weeks being pregnant with Jane, I had to take my rings off. So I think probably by 32 weeks, these rings will have to come off because they are feeling a little bit tight. Otherwise, I haven't really felt puffy in my legs and my feet don't really feel swollen too much, but I know that they are because my rings aren't ever this tight. And that's probably what some of the weight gain was. Sorry, the light is kind of going in and out. So sorry about that. Anyways. The crazy thing is, is that I tracked my weight gain with Jane as well, and I've kind of been comparing them just to see what has been going on, and I noticed that for 31 weeks with Jane, I had gained 24 pounds as well, the same exact weight gain as I have now, and also two and a half pounds since the week before. So this is starting to freak me out a little bit that it's like, going exactly how Jane's pregnancy did. Pretty much to a T. I mean, the, the first trimester was a little different and I've had a few symptoms that I didn't have with Jane and some symptoms with Jane that I don't have now. But as far as weight gain and the size of my belly is going exactly the same week by week as it was with Jane. And I keep thinking to myself, no way that it's gonna do that till the very end, but we'll see. And so, yeah, two and a half pounds. I'm a little bit nervous about that, but I also got in my, oh my gosh, see, it just got really dark. I also got in my Girl Scout cookies that I ordered, and I've kind of been eating a lot of those, so maybe that's why as well. I don't know. So besides that, that is like the least of my worries this week because I've had a lot of other symptoms that are a little bit worrisome to me, and I'm trying not to freak out a little bit. So the first one that I have written down is dizziness. I have been feeling very dizzy and lightheaded lately. And I know that with preeclampsia, which what I had with Jane, that is a sign of preeclampsia is dizziness. I also know that in the third trimester or just in pregnancy in general, you can get dizzy pretty easily. So I'm not too worried about that. But with other symptoms that I'm having this week, is just worrying me a little bit about the preeclampsia. Both doctors that I've seen, or actually I've seen three doctors now, but two of the doctors have told me that most of the time preeclampsia is just in the first pregnancy. Doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna have it in the second pregnancy, and a lot of times you don't have it in the second pregnancy, so they told me not to really worry about it. And I'm not stressing out too much because I do have a blood pressure cuff at home that I use and my blood pressure is not high and that's like the main symptom of preeclampsia. So I'm not too worried about that. But I've also felt really nauseous this week and I'm seeing floaters like, I don't know if you guys know what that is, but like you see things in your vision like little dots or little like specks. And I know that that is a sign of preeclampsia as well. So I'm hoping that this isn't like early symptoms and the blood pressure thing will catch up. I know also that you can have nauseousness, like morning sickness again in the third trimester, so I don't know if that's what's happening as well. And yesterday I actually felt fine, but the four days before yesterday, I was pretty nauseous all day on and off, and I've gotten super bad headaches. And the headaches are like tension headaches, so it hurts really bad in my temples, and then all down my, the back of my neck and my shoulders feel like I did like some sort of workout. Super tense and they just throb. And really all you can take when you're pregnant is Tylenol. And Tylenol does not work at all. So I basically am miserable when I have a headache and I don't wanna do anything. Same with being nauseous. And a lot of times when I have a headache, it makes me nauseous. So just all of that combined 
dizziness, seeing the floaters, nauseousness, and headaches in the past week have been awful. And I'm only 31 weeks, and I really hope that this isn't going to last till the end. I hope maybe I just had a bad week, an off week, I don't know. And then the water retention is also a sign of preeclampsia. Obviously, when you're pregnant, you retain a lot of water anyways. So that doesn't always necessarily mean preeclampsia. But like I said, all of these symptoms together are the symptoms that I had last time. And the scary part is that I didn't even start getting those symptoms until about 34 to 35 weeks. So I'm like three or four weeks ahead of that. And I'm just hoping that this is not what that is. I have a doctor appointment next week and as long as my blood pressure doesn't go up, I probably won't contact my doctor before then. I'll just tell her about it when I get to the appointment. But I am checking my blood pressure regularly just in case. And if it does go up, I will definitely call, obviously, because that's super important. Basically, if I do get preeclampsia, I will have to be induced and have this baby right away. So it's just making me a little bit nervous that I'm only 31 weeks and already starting to feel this. Hopefully these symptoms are just happening all at once and don't really mean anything and they're just regular third trimester symptoms. Like I said, I know all of these symptoms can happen in the third trimester, but with my previous pregnancy, having preeclampsia is just worrying me a little bit and I'm sure you guys can understand. So there's that. The belly is starting to get in the way of pretty much everything. And it's weird because it hasn't really grown too much, like maybe in half an inch since last week. But I've just noticed this week it just being in the way. I can hardly put Jane in the crib. I like to lay her down in the crib, so I basically have to bend all the way over into the crib and then it smushes my belly. So now I just kind of have to like place her in there and tell her to lay down. Also, just picking her up in general, which I try not to do too much, is hard with a huge belly. Also, she likes to sit on my lap at night when I read her a book in the rocking chair. And she, I keep trying to put her on the side or have her like sit facing me. We can read the book, but she wants to sit like square right in the middle and lean back on my belly. And it hasn't been a problem until this week. And it just hurts really bad when she leans back on my belly. Also, I know that I've mentioned before that this kid moves around so much. I constantly feel him moving. I don't have to do kick counts or anything because he's always moving around. But now I'm like determined that he's just facing a totally different way than Jane was because like I said, my weight gain is the same and my belly is measuring the same. So unless he's just a lot bigger and doesn't have as much room and so I feel like every single move or he's facing a different way, like I said, I don't know how it's so different. I don't remember being like this at all with Jane. With Jane, I obviously felt her move, but it was more like swishes or like gentle glides and you know, like maybe like a kick here and there. But with Jackson, I swear I can feel like fingers and toes and like elbows and everything. It's like little tiny pokes here and there that actually hurt. And I remember, with Jane, some of the movements hurt, like if she would get up in my ribs or something like that. But these, he like, I can see like an elbow poking out of my tummy and it like stretches my skin so much that it like hurts. And it never, never did that with Jane. So I don't know if my skin is more stretched this time, but I'm the same size. So I don't know how or what's going on. But like the other night I was laying on my left side, which I know that they get more blood, um, to their body when you lay on your left side, so maybe that's why. But he was moving so much that it was actually keeping me awake, which I've heard of before with other pregnant ladies, but with Jane, she never kept me up. I'm sure she moved around at night, but she never kept me up. But Jackson was keeping me up the other night with how much he was moving. I swear he was about to pop out of my belly any second. And all of a sudden, he just did this one big kick or punch or movement or something. And I literally said, ouch, out loud, because it, like, it hurt. And it's been like that, like, once a day, he'll do one, one jab or one poke or something, and it will actually, like, really hurt my skin, like, feeling like he's about to actually, like, pop out. 
So that's very interesting, and I swear maybe, I know Jane, I can't remember when they checked me to see if she was like head down or where she was facing, but I know like towards the end, obviously she was head down and then facing back, so like just her back was towards me. But I swear Jackson must be facing forward because I can just feel everything. Instead of everything being felt on my back, which you don't feel, I'm feeling it all up front. So maybe he's just in a different position or something. Um, also, he, I can feel him like coming out of the sides, which I never felt with Jane either. So he has to be facing a totally different direction. I asked my doctor last time which way she thought he was facing, and she was like, I don't know. She didn't really, she didn't really like feel around or anything. And she was like, we don't check that until 36 weeks because they move around so much until then. So I don't know. I have no idea what way he's facing, but I swear it's totally different. So besides all of that, um, I have been feeling a little bit better today. I did get a little bit dizzy. My headache is gone, which is good. Um, nauseous on and off I can deal with as long as the headache isn't there with it. Um, I can just sit down and relax a little bit until it goes away because it's not too bad of nauseousness and it kind of just comes and goes. So hopefully I can just deal with all that and hopefully it isn't preeclampsia starting up or anything too serious. I did want to tell you guys about Jackson's nursery. I've been talking about getting his nursery set up and Jane's big girl room set up and I've just come to the reality that it's probably not going to be done by the time he gets here for a few reasons. The main reason being that Jane is still in her crib. She loves her crib, you guys, and I kept saying I'm not going to force her out of the crib if she doesn't want to go out of the crib. So I'm going to wait until she tells me that she doesn't want to be in the crib anymore or until she tries to climb out, which she's never done before. The other night, we decided to have a movie night and see if Jane wanted to watch a movie in our bed and sleep in our bed with us, which I know is like a big no-no sometimes, but she's never slept in our bed ever. And Chris just really wanted to have like a fun family movie night and do that. So we got all set up, we got up, we you know, brought her stuffed animals down, her passies and everything, and we kept talking about it. She seemed really excited, and we watched a movie, and normally her bedtime's at 8, and the movie was over like at 10.30. She was still awake, so we were like, turn the movie off, turn the lights off, and she didn't want to have anything to do with it. She got so confused and just wanted to go in her crib. She kept asking for her crib, so I finally moved her back up to her crib, and she fell asleep right away. So... I think she just really feels comfortable in her crib. So with Jackson being in our room for the first few months, it's not really a big deal to kick her out of the crib quite yet, or at least before he gets here. So the crib needs to go in the nursery for the nursery to be done, obviously, but that's not gonna happen anytime soon. Also, the changing dresser, we have a dresser in Jane's room and it has like a little changing mat on top of it, is also gonna go in the nursery. And until I can find another dresser for Jane, then that will not be moved into his room either. And she is also not potty trained still, so I still change her on that dresser every day, multiple times a day. So I will probably put like a little changing station in our room when Jackson is down there with us, especially for middle of the night changes so I don't have to come up and down stairs. And that will probably stay in her room until we can figure out a dresser for her. And until she's potty trained, I still need a place to change her as well. So his room basically is not gonna be done until those two main things happen. Also, just the fact, like I said, that he's going to be downstairs with us. Jane, we moved Jane to her crib when she was two months old, but her bedroom was right down the hall from our bedroom, so it was really easy to just go get her whenever she was crying. I just wanted to get her used to her crib. And this time, Jackson and Jane's room is upstairs and our room is downstairs, and with as many times as they wake up in the middle of the night when they're that little, he will probably stay in our room for a little bit longer, maybe even like five or six months, just for that reason alone that I don't wanna to have to go up and down steps a million times a night. That might change, but that's just what I'm thinking right now. So hopefully 
we will have the nursery put together at some point and I can do a nursery reveal for you guys, but 95% sure that it's not going to be done by the time he gets here. So there's that as well. Now this uh, update is getting really, really long. So I'm going to show you my belly and we will be done for the week. Okay. So this is with the shirt on. And then with the shirt up, totally an out Audi belly button, you guys. I can see my belly button through my shirt now, and it was not like that with Jane at all. And so it's kind of funny to see, like when I put tight shirts on, you can see my belly button. But let me see if I have my measuring tape. I do. Okay, so last week, I was 39 and a half inches, I believe. And this week, oops, wrong side. This week, oh my gosh, I can hardly see. I'm 40 inches. So 40 inches, a half inch bigger than last week, which hopefully maybe explains the weight gain. But thanks so much for watching, you guys. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave me in the comments below if you had third trimester uh, sickness and what all that entailed. Maybe it'll help me feel a little bit better about um, the preeclampsia situation. But um, just keep me in your prayers, and I will see you guys next week. Bye.